All right, hello boys. It is me, 420 Dragon, and today we're gonna be taking a look at some of the deck lists from the Popper Challenges over the weekend. Uh, so it seems as though since the transition over to Daybreak, they haven't actually been able to release the official deck lists. Uh, so I wasn't able to find the official uh, deck list from the top eight anywhere. So instead, we are just going to have some from the Twitter posts. This is obviously not every single deck, but uh, is a couple of the decks in the format that did make top eight over the weekend. So here we got Hamuda MTG going into the top four with 61 card affinity. I was actually thinking about 61 cards in affinity. I think that it actually is not that crazy to put 61 cards in affinity uh considering the deck just that the deck just draws so many cards and uh you do kind of want uh like the deck does tend to kind of flood out a bit so i think that adjusting the spells to lands ratio and going up to 61 cards is not absolutely insane um and yeah, I think this list is pretty interesting. He's got double Krarks, uh, three Fountain, four Blast, four Star, one Chainer's Main. I like that. Four, four Deadly, four Bargain. I like that too. He's only going with two Thought Casts in terms of the card draw and four Bargain, four Dispute. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially in a meta game where uh, uh, Kuldotha Red is one of the most played decks. Uh, it definitely makes a lot of sense to be playing so many bargains. I think I also like a couple of Frogmites here. Uh, again, they're pretty nice against Kuldotha Red. And they also do just allow you to get threats on the board sooner. You can sack them to bargain if you need to gain life. They also make Rebuke a bit better. Uh, and they help give you a random thing for Blood Fountain too, which can uh, be pretty nice. Uh, and then we got two Kanku, two Rebuki, one Fumes is pretty interesting. I haven't seen many uh, affinity decks going with the main deck Fumes, but I guess it does complement the Chainers fairly nice. Uh, you're able to, against Cogate or whatever, like kill all the 1-1s one -ones and then Chainers the Guardian. Two Kanku, obviously one of the... Uh, very nice pickups for the affinity deck in recent times very strong card in the deck uh and then four enforcer one angler as far as the top end threats go and let's see in the sideboard we got four blasts three red blasts two spell bombs three gorillas uh one fumies one arms one chainers i think uh this looks like a pretty clean list from hamuda here uh, and I definitely will probably try this out this week, to be honest. Let's move on to the next deck. We got Weber. Top four on... Looks like this was on Sunday playing blue-black. Uh, let's see. So he's playing fairies. 20 lands here. He's got the shuffle lands, two swamps, four fetches, four... Uh, Swamp Island, 10 Island, 3 Brainstorm, 2 Dispel, 3 Fairy Seer, 3 Augs, 4 Preordain. I do like the switch over to the Big Boy Ninja here. Uh, we did see a blue-black Fairies deck that was playing uh, the Small Ninja, but I think the Big Ninja is just so much more impressive. As it really is just a must-answer threat. The second point of toughness is pretty useful with a lot of suffocating fumes running around in the format. Uh, it diversifies your threats. If they're fumesing, they're not able to kill all your fairies and your ninjas. You're still going to have those ninjas stick around. Uh, and then also, I mean, this card is just completely absurd. Like, if your opponent's not able to answer it, you can just kill everything, draw two cards a turn, and the game is just over. Uh, three cast down, two chainers as far as the removal, one fumes, and four snuff, of course. Two monarch woman, and two angler as well. Sort of the uh, top end threats. I like this setup. I think in this style of deck, angler is probably a lot better than uh, Telerian Terror just because uh, there's not really much of a need to play Terror in this deck. Angler is just going to be easier to come down with, your, uh, with you putting like lands in the graveyard, your creatures dying. Stuff like that. It just makes it a lot easier to get the angler down. 
Uh, and then in terms of the sideboard, we got five blue blasts. Definitely pretty prepared for uh, the burn strategies, it seems. Though it looks like he did actually lose both of his losses were against the burn strategy, even with the five hydros and the two fangs. So that is kind of interesting. It seems as though the burn deck is pretty resilient. Uh, one chainers two fangs one reaping i think this is pretty nice it's probably pretty good in uh these sort of grindier matchups i do like the uh reaping uh psh, one thorn in the board for i guess those grindy matchups i'm not i guess it's probably pretty good against terror you're just able to like chainers out all their juicers drop a thorn and then you know, they really need to have a counter for the Thorn. You're probably having Reapings too. And they might not even bring in Spell Bombs against the Fairy style deck. So, uh, it's probably pretty good. Reaping is probably pretty good in that matchup specifically. Um, got the one Agony Warp to deal with Guardians, Arms, and Fumes to deal with small creatures out of, like, Goldotha. Fumes probably good against Cogate too. And then a couple Spell Bombs. I think this is a pretty sweet list and... I wouldn't be surprised if this started seeing a lot more play going forward. So then we got Musasabi going top two. Looks like this was on the Saturday challenge. Uh, and he was playing Cog Gates here. For Cat, for Brainstorm, for Preordain. One Spell Pierce. Uh, two Fumies. Three counter, or no, four counter spell. Uh, four modern age, four squadron hawk, for this. So he's actually cutting a spell pierce for like a behold, and then he's having two guards. This looks pretty standard. Uh, this looks like kind of the carves esque build with uh, a behold here. I guess it's kind of somewhere in between because it's not running like four spikes or anything like that. Uh. But yeah, this looks like a pretty clean version of the deck. It does have the standard bears in the sideboard. The Dawnbringer Clerics, too. This card is uh, really versatile. It's able to deal with, like, Bogles pretty well. It's pretty good against Mono Red. Just a 1-3 that's able to gain some life and do a decent bit of blocking or eat a burn spell. It's pretty useful. Uh, and then 3 Blue Blasts only and 4 Red Blasts as well as four dust for the affinity matchup. I think this is a pretty reasonable version of the deck. Honestly, if I was going to play this deck, I might change out like one or two dust for Gorilla Shamans, just because I think that the combination of dust and Gorilla Shaman makes it really hard for the affinity deck to properly answer uh, the sideboard hate. With stuff like Negate or Turn Aside not working against Gorilla Shaman and stuff like Blue Blast not working against dust, it just makes their life a bit difficult, not really knowing which... Uh, which one to sort of play around. All right, and then we got Andreas Peterson, Eco Baronin, uh, going top four with just a pretty stock standard version of Blueback Terrors. Uh, it's pretty straight up, two Chainers, two Fangs, four Snuff, two DA, two Augs, maxing out on the cantrip 16, and then 17 lands here and three spell pierce and then in terms of the sideboard we got five blasts and extra auger that looks like for edict protection uh and the grandier matchups one spell bomb two arms and two fumes that's interesting there's a lot of sweepers and then two diabolic edicts it's interesting that they go with the diabolics uh before maxing out on chainers i guess they're valuing the instant speed pretty highly I'm not exactly sure why that is, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't really know why they're going with the Diabolics instead of the Chainers. I guess it is better with, like, if you're holding up Counterspell, decide not not counter something, you go end step Diabolic. That is a situation where Diabolic is better, but... Yeah, I don't know. That's a little bit confusing to me, but... Whatever. And then, this is definitely the spiciest deck of the weekend, was... Weber splitting the finals with slivers here. Holy moly, what is going on? Okay, so we got eight forests, seven planes, one manor gate, one mountain, one 
whatever the fuck this is. Tap on tap creature you control. Add one minute of any color. I guess you can only spend it on creatures or something. Or no, maybe this one you can just spend it on anything. Uh, two Ash Barons. Three Benevolent Bodyguard. I think this is pretty nice in the strategy. You're able to protect the important slivers like muscles. Uh, and this guy is really annoying. The Hunter Sliver, the Provoke Sliver, that guy is a fucking headache to deal with. That guy comes down and you're just able to basically turn all of your slivers into like removal spell every turns if if your slivers are bigger than the opponent's creatures. Uh, and that can just be an insanely massive headache. Uh, they got the flanking sliver. This one basically ends up uh, being like a muscle sliver if your creatures end up fighting other creatures in combat uh, while you're attacking of course. This one's giving your creatures, your slivers, plus zero, plus one. This one is dealing with any enchantments. I think that's pretty nice uh, piece of tech. The Masked Vandal main deck, I think I like that. It is, you know, all of the best decks are having stuff that that hits. Like, Koldotha has the artifact lands. Affinity has all artifacts. Uh, Cogates is having journeys. I guess it is probably not very useful against blue-black, but basically every other deck is having... Uh, premium targets for Masked Vandal. And then they got the one Haste Sliver, 12 Muscle Slivers, 4 Winding Way, and 3 Lead the Stampede. I think that is really the backbone of this deck, and uh, a big reason why it's able to succeed is that it's able to play 7 big juicy card draws. And then it's got the Mana Sliver too, which is uh, pretty nice. You're able to just sort of unload your hand with, you know, you go, like, put out some slivers, turn two, like, turn one sliver, turn two, sliver, turn three, like, sliver, or no, turn three, like, you go, like, this guy, and then, like, maybe, like, play, like, a card draw and play, like, another sliver or something. And then at a certain point, your board just gets completely out of control. You got the prismatic strands to deal with the red decks, four lone mish as well, flaring pain to deal with uh, the strands out of uh, cogates, gorilla shaman to mess up some affinities, another mass vandal because it's versatile. Uh, Obsidian Acolyte? I guess that is for, like, black decks? It's kind of an interesting choice. It doesn't really do anything against Edicts, but I guess that Edicts aren't probably very good against Slivers in the first place, because you're just able to sack, like, whatever your Plated or Sidewinder or Benevolent Bodyguard or mostly useless Sliver and keep around the important Muscle Slivers. So I guess the Obsidian Acolyte does protect the Muscle Slivers from like snuff out targeted removal, cast down, stuff like that. Lead the Stampede helps uh, when you need to grind. And yeah, this deck looks pretty sweet. Might have to try it out. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for watching. And those are the decks I could find from this weekend. This one is definitely the coolest. So yeah, I'll have links to the tweets down in the description so you can check them out yourself if you want. And peace out, boys.